Welcome back as we continue our discussion of Sula by Toni Morrison. And I'm sure that men have the same thing, but I can't speak as a man. I, I don't know, but, um, you know, I, I can see where it fits in, where it, it, you, you can only get from another woman relationship, you know, mm-hmm. as, as a self relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, w- I would, would love, I would love to know what uh, men think of this book and how they see these characters. I, I would wish and pray and hope that someday we get some uh, responses from, from some men who've read this story and what they, their take on it, because it does seem to be such a female focused story. And yet the male characters in it are, are incredible, incredibly well written and interesting. And so, um, you know, hopefully out there somewhere are some men who are willing to take a crack at the book or at least the passage and uh, maybe come up with some inspired new creations of their own that that uh, that they they find something in the passage. You know, I keep coming thinking about that little list at the end of those those visuals at the end of the 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 what, what is it? The the deaths of the littlest things. And then there's that list. And I, I just feel like if you could take something in every one of those items, those visuals, and create incredible, you know, inspired artwork just from the list, you know, let alone the rest of the passage, you know, just from something in that list, you know, it's just, oh, my goodness. Mm. So uh, I would love to know, Deborah, you hinted that there is a poem currently percolating. I would Uh love to know what things are we now inspired to start creatively in reaction to this book? We should say Um, we're all writers. I don't know. I I already have a a journal filled with, (laughs) like I said, I, you know, when I was going through this, it's like, I don't know how they're going to pick an entry. I don't know how they're going to pick an entry because there's, there's something in every one of these chapters. So I've got, I've got different things that I want to play with different, you know, I've got my toes dappling in different ponds in this. I really like this whole idea of uh, the two of them really are one Mm -hmm. and they had to have those opportunities that 10 year split to become different so that they could bring their yin and they could bring their yang together to become one and that that relationship but but it has to i don't know i because of the magic of tony morrison's words i don't see that this could have happened any other place in the universe other than at the bottom yeah (laughs) there's just something about how the environment you know the 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 men in the periphery the other characters in the, the in the in this environment well, the, the bottom is a character they, in a way you yeah, know the yeah. bottom is a character yeah know, because it, you know it has its story and it's it starts on a uh, on a false note mm-hmm. and you know how they come to deal with the, the things that are not true mm-hmm. and yeah how I agree. it's just incorporated into you know like you know, be, you know celebrating suicide day and <laughs> but see the, here's the thing if you think about it the theme of death in this book is so powerful not just the suicide day but just think about all the different tragedies we've talked about the Lots you know chicken chicken little hannah it grew some horrible ralph i mean uh you know all of this stuff is just horrific and also we barely mentioned this Sula dies in this book, you know, she dies. And then we just have Nell Mm -hmm. dealing with that. So, and, and it takes Sula dying for Nell to get back to being one with her, you know, and so claims the one. Yeah. Death is huge in this book. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I, I feel like, again, going back to our passage, death is in that passage as well. It's, it's, I mean, the word death is in the passage, literally, but there's also a lot of descriptive stuff that it evokes death and the, the, well, the dead women, that's, I guess the death and dead is in there twice, you know, and they're, like I said, the tiny bodies of Cornish hens, they're dead, you know, the wedding rings in a pawn shop, the marriage is dead, 
you know, uh, broken stems of marsh grass battered and drowned by the sea. They're dead. <laughs> you know, they're drowned. You know, the castaway shoes of children. Their shoes are cast away. They're throw their trash it's the, you know, i mean it's dead 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 death is in this book uh oh my goodness it's such a it's a powerful powerful thread and i feel like it's really in our passage too so um i i don't but i don't think it's a depressing downer thing necessarily you know there's almost this celebration or celebratory um feeling because it's Toni Morrison writes about all these deaths in such almost matter of fact she writes about the horrific deaths of certain characters almost with a matter of factness or a natural flowness in the story that it's almost like you read it and you're like wait a minute did so someone just die what what just you know what I gotta go back and read that again you know and so it's it's a there it's these it's her beautiful prose Again, we started out talking about her beautiful prose. It's her beautiful prose that brings this story alive. Not, the characters are alive. The deaths are alive. You know, everything, the bottom is a breathing, living entity in this story. Um, it's just, it's, it's so incredible. It really is. So I hope we get a lot of wonderful, inspired artwork, music, poetry, Pros, whatever. I mean, I'm torn with what I want to create. I, I want to create so much that I, I know I won't have time to. But I'm still trying to finish one of my, one of my creations from last year's nights. Nice. So, yeah, it's you know, Alice. I, I gotta admit, just, just because I feel a little ornery sometimes. Go figure. I'm really trying to design a cake. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't think it's going to be coming out of Sula. Okay, Sorry, maybe no, not. Maybe no, not this. Maybe not this Sula. Not, yeah, just maybe, not cake worthy. Yeah. I don't know what the yeah. deal is. Now I, you I really well, want to do a cake. Yeah. For you, Alice. Oh. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah E has been wanting to decorate a cake from one of our nice, you know, inspirations for years. I know. And I'm, oh. I'm thinking what I made you. Um, cause I have so many ways I want to go, but I really want to, um, cook that little Cornish hen. Do you? It's a little nest of rice. And I want to study, you know, how the people who take beautiful, uh, advertisement photographs for food and for menus, I want to study what they do and then do the opposite and make it look sad and yeah. pathetic. Oh my gosh. Now, are you going to just do one little Cornish hen or are you going to do at least two? So it's tiny bodies. <laughs> oh, you're right. I better do two. Ooh. I don't know. Oh, I better I do too. Know. But I, 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 they need to look sad and lonely. Yeah. I I think, you know, the, there's so much. I mean, it, I can imagine some photographers out there, you know, would respond to the prom photographs of, it, of dead women she never knew. It's not mm -hmm. of dead people. It's long ago prom photographs. I mean, wouldn't it be cool to be able to find some old prom photos and put together a collage or something like that, mm -hmm. and especially if they were prom photos of people you never knew and just get that same experience of what what feelings do you get looking at these old photos, you know, but where do you find old prom photos? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that's, yeah, that aren't stock. Yeah, that aren't mm -hmm. stock. That's what I mean. You'd be, be I, I don't know. I, I'm not an aficionado of where you find old photos, but you know, I, I know I've been to like um, uh, antique stores and flea market stores and stuff like that, where you can find boxes and boxes of old photos of, you know, our wedding photos framed over there. You don't know who it is, but just, you know, you can find historic photos. I just don't know how easy it would be to find a bunch of prom ones and put together some kind of artwork, mm -hmm. um, you know, but I, you know, wouldn't that be cool if, if it wasn't COVID-19, I, I, you know, and I wasn't kind of self-quarantining just out of fear of, you know, all the, all the dreaded rising numbers out there, I'd probably be haunting the the local shops you know antique stores and stuff trying to find a photograph of something that anything that looks like it might be an old prom photo you know <laughs> to put something together but um because i think that would just be such a fascinating thing but mm -hmm. um but i mean i also really feel like i want to paint the broken stems of marsh grass battered and drowned by the sea because that could be a little more abstracty in my style of painting and stuff. And I really almost see it. I almost see that in my, in my mind's eye. It's such a complete visual for me. It's the way she wrote that 
that one little phrase, broken stems of marsh grass battered and drowned by the sea. That's just complete. It's just complete. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, uh, it's, there's so much going on. And that's just from our passage. I mean, I, you know, sometimes I try to focus on being inspired by the literal standalone passage and not the book as a whole that we choose or whatever. And, and in, with this book in particular, because I feel like the passage kind of represents the entire book in a way, I'm comfortable with just looking at the passage and trying to get my inspiration just from the passage. Mm -hmm. There's so much more in the book though, that I, you know, I mean, like when we talked about what passage you we were going to pick, I was just like, Oh, it's too, it's too rich. I know there's so much I want to create. Mm -hmm. I'm so inspired. But um, I'm going to try to limit myself to the passage on this one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Definitely, def you know, tantalizing to all the senses mm -hmm. all throughout. It's, it's, it's and some, somehow, somehow mm -hmm. somebody's got to come up with something that, that uh, illustrates somehow either visually or through music or poetry or something that illustrates this conflict that's in the passage and in the whole book, that conflict between the inner, the inner rage or the inner self of sorrow or rage or whatever you're feeling, loneliness and the outer reality of whatever's going on in the moment. Um, you know, and in this particular passage, it's during that passage starts during lovemaking. It's not saying after lovemaking, she's lying there thinking all this stuff. This is what she's thinking during lovemaking she has that rage and loneliness and all of that stuff during the act of sexual you know relationships with a man so um i feel like the conflict that's in this passage and in the different conflicts in the book there's got to be some way to illustrate and visualize and express those conflicts in inspired artwork and i'm kind of thinking of it for myself in terms of some sort of painting that might do that too but i don't know i don't know it's you know which medium or genre of artwork i'm going to end up creating i don't know but th that's kind of where i'm leaning i don't know sure and i would it's say in, in all seriousness besides my my cornish hens um this book has inspired me to look at things i'm in the process of writing and think how am I highlighting some of those female friendships and that dynamic and bringing those oh. more to the fore and exploring those? So part of your creative inspiration is going to just be reflected in your own future works, right. not necessarily something to be shared specifically for this project, but just you just feel like right. it's it's that's mm -hmm. that's huge. That's right. That's, great. A, that's a takeaway that I can apply in many places. Wow, that's awesome. Yay. So. Next up, we continue our discussion of Sula by Toni Morrison. <laughs> 